is how is how is this better than what we're getting rid of after the amount of money that's been spent? Well, I think it's significantly better than what we got rid of for a number of reasons. One is, and I, and I have to remind you about all the things that I'm that I'm tasked to do. Uh, we talk about space flight, and particularly human space flight when we're here, because that's what everybody lives and breathes here. But I'm also responsible for science and aeronautics and and other types of exploration and technology development. So. What the president did in this budget was he gave us a plus up in, in, the, in the area of science specifically to work on earth si enhancing our ability to do earth science and climate change study, uh, enhancing our ability to spend money on technology development, which means uh, when you go to a place like Stanford or MIT or, or um, I don't know, the University of Florida, there will be NASA money uh, in the research budget there where there hasn't been for the last 10 years, and that's important. Uh, we've got to involve, uh, if I want kids to be interested in working in the STEM fields, then I've got to give them some things on campus that they will say, I want to be an engineer, and now I can work with somebody who's doing research for NASA because NASA is funding research again. One of the things that I would love to do, and I've been working with Bobby Block, my new chief technologist, is trying to institute a program, a scholar, a full fully paid scholarship program for kids going into engineering. Uh, NASA hasn't done that for a number of years, and I want to be able to do that. So uh, I think we are, uh, we have been afforded the money to begin the road to a true heavy lift launch capability. We're, we've been given extra money to try to uh, enable commercial to get to low Earth orbit, and that's going to be critical. I, I, if we're going to, you know, the president has agreed to extend the life of the International Space Station to 2020, if I can't get guys like Elon Musk and David Thompson uh, to deliver, um, then we're in trouble. So it is critical that I facilitate their success because NASA's success and the country's success depends on our ability to, to help these commercial guys be able to step in where shuttle's stepping out. You know, we don't have a replacement for shuttle. Uh, people talk about putting all my eggs in one basket. That's what Constellation was going to be. Constellation was going to be putting all our eggs in one basket again, to be quite honest. We were going to have a single U.S. capability to get to low Earth orbit. If I can facilitate the success of, a, of an orbital and a SpaceX, now I have a redundant U.S. capability to get to low Earth orbit. And what gives me triple redundancy is Soyuz is still going to be there. But I, I'm uncomfortable having to rely on Soyuz as my only capability to get humans into orbit the way it's going to be at the end of this year. So my goal is to speed the delivery of the products from people like Orbital and SpaceX and, and some of the other companies that are, that are now starting to bid and come into the commercial sector. Uh, Todd Halverson of Florida Today. Charlie, could you give us uh, some idea of what type of timetable you would be working on toward developing a heavy lift vehicle, whether this is something that would happen before uh, 2020 and, and perhaps a timetable for when uh, the United States of America would send astronauts beyond Earth orbit? Todd, it would be my hope, and we talked about this a little bit yesterday. Uh, you know, it would be my hope that as we go and talk with Congress and, and reach a decision on what the road ahead really is, because that, I think all of you are aware that the, the appropriations language for me says I can't cancel anything, I can't terminate anything without going back to get legislation that allows me to do that. So. So I do have to negotiate with my partners in Congress. You know, I represent the executive branch, but they represent an incredibly important branch of our three-legged government. So as we go back and, and try, as I try to make peace with them for having screwed up so far, uh, what I hope they will, they will allow me to do is convince them that we can, we can put ourselves on a path to attain a heavy lift launch capability within the, within the next couple of decades, ideally, I would like to be flying a heavy lift launch capability between 2020 and 2030. Uh, so when I tell, you know, people always wonder, okay, are you really serious when you say you thank Norm Augustine for what he did? Norm saved me, uh, you know, having to go in and do my own uh, evaluation of the status of the Constellation program in the agency. So I'm not going to take issue with what Norm and his esteemed group found because I agree with, with almost all of it. Um, the, uh, it'd be nice to have an extra $6 billion a year to do Constellation and Keep Station and, and Seed Commercial, but um, the Augustine Commission months and months ago pretty much said 
this isn't going to happen. And um, in light of that, I'd like to know if you could please just characterize a little bit of the debate that went into making this decision and why the NASA workforce wasn't better prepared to hear it. Oh, I can't characterize the debate because that would require me to, to talk about conversation between me and the, or between me and the president, and I won't, I won't do that. Uh,